Hi and welcome to my first devlog for a game I am calling Mage Time. I've been working on this project for about six months. Let me catch you up on all the work I have up to this point. I've been using Unity off and on for several years, but sadly haven't finished many of my game dev projects, usually because I tried to build something too ambitious and lost motivation. My interest in game dev first started in high school. I got really into 3D modeling using a program called Autodesk Maya and created lots of environments and characters. In high school, I wasn't very interested in programming and struggled to turn my projects into something more than just basic walk simulators. After a brief attempt to make 3D art for a living in some community college, I went to a four-year university and graduated in 2018 with a degree in computer science and started working in big tech as a software engineer. Since then, I've dabbled with various game development projects, but nothing serious. In 2020, I was playing Among Us a lot during the pandemic. It was quite fun to play with friends and coworkers, so I felt inspired and decided to learn how to make a simple multiplayer game myself. I wasn't sure what multiplayer framework to use for Unity and ended up stumbling upon ML API. It was pretty intuitive, had good documentation, and a great community on Discord. To learn, I created a small clone of Among Us and posted it on GitHub about 11 months ago. Since then, I've been slowly working on a multiplayer game of my own. My multiplayer game started off as a survival game where you fight off waves of monsters. I was inspired by Call of Duty Nazi Zombies, but wanted to make something that would be more accessible and with cuter graphics and a fantasy theme. I took my Among Us clone and started working on a rough prototype. However, I soon found the game I was making wasn't that fun and I was quickly losing motivation to work on it. The waves of monsters were repetitive and boring and there were no game design elements with good progression. Losing motivation, I ended up taking a break from game dev for a couple months. After playing Hades and brainstorming some ideas around with my brother, who plays a lot of roguelike games, I decided to pivot my wave defense game and make it more of a dungeon crawler roguelite that focused on character building, level progression, and was designed for multiplayer gameplay from the beginning. Right now I don't have a great name, but I'm calling the game Mage Time. It's currently available on Steam as a free playtest that you can actually download and play right now. Do check it out, I'll put the link in the description below. Mage Time is a top-down shooter that focuses on character building, level progression, and fast-paced style combat with cool magic spells. Levels are procedurally generated grids, and the number of rows and columns slowly increases. Every time you clear the monsters in a room, a random spell or upgrade drops. You can only hold three spells at a time and have to make trade-off decisions based on what spells are dropping as loot in the run and what you think will best help your mages build for the current run. I really enjoyed the character progression with the boon system in the game Hades because it added a lot of variability to each run and made escaping from Hades replayable. The more rooms you can clear, the more loot and upgrades you will have to optimize your mage's build. There are a bunch of different spell types like fireball, chain lightning, blood, poison arrow, and arcane arrow. The spells all have something that makes them unique. The fireball has a shotgun burst power up and the chain lightning bounces between nearby targets and the blood spell steals life from the enemy and heals your mage. There are also common upgrades and effects that improve every spell like bouncing off of walls, spell penetration, homing missile-like aim guidance, and common upgrades that improve the speed, damage, size, and cast rate of the spells. A shadowy mist slowly moves up the map, limiting how much time you have to explore rooms horizontally before you have to make it to the end of the level and get to the safe zone. Eventually, as the levels become more difficult, you may only have enough time to go straight through the level, greatly reducing the loot you encounter and your mage's development. Every few levels, there are boss fights at the end, serving as a gatekeeper for players who have not developed their mage's spells enough. Since I'm primarily developing this as a multiplayer game that can be played as a single player game, and not a single player game that can be played as a multiplayer game, all my game design decisions are made from the perspective of working in a multiplayer setting. For example, the game difficulty scales dynamically based on the number of players, the difficulty of the mobs and the amount of loot that will be dropped increases based on the number of nearby players when the room is first triggered. The levels also scale in size based on the number of players. While a lot of the core functionality in Mage Time is working, there are many features and improvements I'm going to be working on and hopefully documenting in future devlogs. One of the biggest improvements I need to make is balancing the difficulty of the game. Right now, it's sometimes way too easy and the spell upgrade progression is just too fast compared to the level and the enemy progression, causing the game to just keep getting easier and easier 
rather than harder. There are also some broken spell combos and glitches. For example, the poison effect currently stacks and when combined with another effect called Omni Finisher, allows you to inflict massive amounts of damage even on bosses. I really like the difficulty of games like Dark Souls and Hotline Miami, where the game is hard in an addicting way that makes you keep trying to get past a certain level or boss, even if it takes you a dozen attempts. I hope to use these games as the quality bar for what difficulty in a game should feel like. Right now the game has 10 levels and 3 bosses. I plan to have 30 levels, 6 bosses, and 6 distinct level environment themes like forest, dungeon, desert, ice, lava, and dark themes. I'm also planning to add a better starting home base, just like Hades has the House of Hades, and Dark Souls 3 has the Firelink Shrine. I'm thinking of embracing the wizard school theme and making the home base a wizard school or mage tower setting. I'm currently working on some special NPC encounters to add more unique variability to each playthrough, kind of like encountering invasions in Dark Souls with the red and blue phantoms. The current thought is the blue wizard will help you fight through the levels and will reward you with a powerful spell or upgrade in later levels if you give them spells in early levels. The red wizard brings complete chaos to the run. The Red Wizard is deadly but won't attack you unless you get close. The Red Wizard goes around the level wreaking havoc and consuming all the loot in rooms, hindering your ability to improve your mage's build during that run, and instead pushes you to just focus on being able to make it to the level's safe room. With the effort to make NPC characters with some decent AI, I've also started adding spells that summon pets to help you. Right now I have a cute cat that fearlessly attacks enemies for you and acts as a tank. These features are not fully working yet, so the current build you can play on Steam does not have the red and blue phantom encounters or the pets. I'd also really like to work on and own the visual art style of the game. While I modeled the 3D level pieces, I did not create any of the characters, spells, or monsters. I'd like to create my own custom characters and monster artwork and graphics when I have time. As a one-person team, I've mostly been focusing on the programming and game design, and have been using placeholder models from the asset store for the monsters and the spells. For the monsters, I've been using some great Unity assets created by Mesh Tint. It's funny, these monster models seem to also be used by that popular mobile game, Archero. I've also been using spell particle effects from Gabriel Aguiar, who sells a bunch of cool magic particle effects on the asset store, and has also his own YouTube channel where he uploads cool tutorials about Shader Graph and Unity's particle system. Anyway, that's everything going on with Mage Time so far. Thank you so much for watching this first devlog. I plan on uploading a new video every two to three weeks to show new features and changes to the game, so please be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Until next time.